Greetings. This is an Antex 690SD digital temperature controlled soldering station. And so is this. This is my original one though, and it's knackered. It used to get a lot of use and a lot of plugging and unplugging, and one day something possibly got shorted out in the plug, and as I needed a working one pretty quickly, I just went out and bought another one. Bonus fact, I never changed the irons, just the station. I just dug the deaf one out of the attic, and the iron that's with it is brand new. Nice. So what's wrong with it? Well, I don't know yet, but it doesn't detect the presence of a soldering iron. It just shows the ER2 error message, indicating that either the sensor is open circuit, or the iron is simply not plugged in. Error 1, incidentally, means that the iron's plugged in, but the heater element is open circuit. And before I try and track the fault down, and hopefully fix it, let's take a look around the outside. On the top rear is a mains input and an on-off switch. On the rear are a pair of screw mounts to allow it to mount onto a vertical surface, such as a wall or a bench upstand. On the side of the faulty one is an ESD bonding point, but that's not a standard feature. It's one I added in so I could plug my work mat in. On the front is a 5 pin DIN socket to connect the iron to, an LED showing when the element is getting power, three buttons to set the temperature and other settings, and a four digit LED starburst display. The up and down arrows are used to adjust the desired soldering temperature, but if both are pressed simultaneously, you can choose one of two preset temperature settings. I've got 370 degrees Celsius as a soldering temperature, plus 65 degrees Celsius, which is as low as it will go, so I can see when it's cool enough to be unplugged and thrown in the toolbox. The F button lets you adjust these memory settings. You can also choose whether you're using normal bits, or a variety of desoldering bits, which I forgot I bought. Enter a pin to lock the settings. Adjust between degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. Set one of eight languages, or go back to the normal display. The iron itself is an Antex SD50 24 volt 50 watt static dissipative soldering iron with a grounded tip. No resistor in series, this is connected directly to the earth connection through the mains plug. So that's the outside. Let's unplug and take a look inside. There's a fair bit of stuff in here. I suppose I better trace it out, wouldn't I? <laughs> it's a big one. Half the board is taken up with the task of running the display, which is done using a serial output from the processor together with four 74HC164 serial to parallel shift registers to shift into place all of the segments that need to be lit and whether those segments are in characters 1 and 3 by setting IC8 QH high, or characters 2 and 4 by setting IC6 QH high. This animation shows the path taken by a single bit being shifted through all four chips. In this example, I'm just using the left-hand characters. In practice, the anodes for both left and right characters will be getting power. Which digit is lit will be determined by Q4 and Q3. As another example, here's AA being shifted into the left-hand characters of each display, with IC8QH set to activate the left-hand characters. Normally you wouldn't see this, as the processor has overall control over whether or not the cathodes are grounded by a Q53. Only once a full 32-bit, 28-segment plus digit selection has been shifted in, would the processor turn Q53 on to light the segments for a brief period. After this brief illumination, the processor will turn the LEDs back off and repeat the process with the other two segments. Here's an example with the letters B, C this time. Once more, once the segments and selector are all in place, the processor will briefly turn Q53 on to light all the segments. Repeat this process quickly enough and what you get is a four character display. Incidentally, if the unit is just displaying all of its segments, then that would suggest that either Q53 has failed short circuit, processor pin 1 has failed open or high, or there's a stray connection either pulling up Q53's base or grounding its collector. 
Staying over on the more easily understandable part of the schematic, for me anyway, we've got the Zilog Z8 microcontroller running the show at 8 MHz, connected to a small serial EEPROM and the three control push buttons. It's also got five more I.O. pins besides what we've seen. There's an output controlling the soldering iron, a 100 or 120 Hz clock input derived from the rectified 12 volt supply, a temperature sensing input and two more outputs whose role appears to be to interfere with the temperature sensing circuit. Why? Well, the processor doesn't have an analog to digital converter, and there isn't one on the board either, just a quad op amp. So as far as I can tell, to determine the temperature, it's got to use a combination of reading a digital output that's been spewed out from the op amps, shorting the temperature probe to act as a reference point, and influencing the op amp's behaviour by pulling down the signal between two of them. In a nutshell, I don't know how it works, it just does. Or at least normally it does. The rest of the circuit has two 5 volt regulators, one offset from the other and feeding into it, and the connections to the iron. The iron and its accompanying LED are switched by a triac, whose operation is controlled by Q52. There's also the sensing circuit of the soldering iron, and that can be short-circuited by MOSFET Q1 if Q2 is turned off by the processor. And that all brings us to the fault. What's likely to get affected by an accidental introduction of 24 volts AC? Fortunately, the processor is fairly well removed from the input shenanigans, so I suspect it's either the MOSFET or the op amp, or both. Let's pull them to test. I'll use my new soldering iron for that. Incidentally, this is the sensing circuit in the old soldering iron. There's a sensor wire down there, but it does have this bridge as shown on the schematic. Some weird reason. Here's the MOSFET I need to remove. That's well, another good reason for tracing out the schematic. I uh, managed to rip a pad off the board removing the MOSFET. At least with the schematic I can now work out where it was supposed to connect to anyway. And put a bridge wire back in. That doesn't appear to me to be a very happy MOSFET. Well, straight off the bat, I found an RFP 50N06 in my spare components pile, which is rated a slightly higher voltage and has the same pinout. At least that's showing properly. So. Let's try with this. I can test this using the old iron. Let's find out. Is changing that with a roughly equivalent MOSFET enough to fix the fault, or do I have to look at the op amp as well? Well, it's sort of working, but is that accurate? It's very sensitive to being touched. I think that may have fixed it. What it should do now is go down to the 65 degrees and then just start pulsing the the uh, the feed for the for the soldering iron. There we go. Just to keep it at what it thinks is 65 degrees. Let's both units back together. And one thing I should say is that this DIN jack isn't the original one. The original one would have fallen to bits. So I'd have shoehorned in the replacement. That one I've probably replaced as well. It looks too rough on, on the sides for it to be the original one. Uh, what I've done with this one, because the shielding was pushing back and threatening to short things out again, I just chopped it out because it's only going to make it uh, make it fail. And it doesn't stop you actually putting the jacks in. So, both back together again. No glare on the screen this time. I've angled them forwards with a pen on the back. Now 
what I'll do when they get up to temperature, this one's there, this one's nearly there, I'll swap the irons over just to see what the, the readings are. See if they're around about the same or if one is um, it's quite a way out. I don't know how accurate these are. I mean, you, you saw the way the circuit works. They're pretty close, I'd say. Ignore that buzzing, that's a slightly loose transformer. So yeah, they're pretty much in step with each other. I say that's a fix. One not particularly cheap solder station fixed, and all that to do is change that MOSFET. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon.